disorder in the family of disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders is oppositional defiant disorder. So if you imagine briefly what this person is like, this is a person who likes to talk back and answer and try to annoy people, especially of authority. So let's say you're a teacher, a police, uh, a policeman, or let's say even a parent, this person would most likely want to talk back at you and refuse to follow what you ask him or her to do. So that's the, like the image you conjure up in your mind. Okay? So if we look at the specific diagnostic criteria, first, the person should exhibit at least four symptoms from any of the following categories. So there are three categories. The person should exhibit four behaviors at least. Uh, with an individual who is not a sibling. So this is important. Why not a sibling? Because if you have a sibling, you know that from childhood, there will be times that you'll be arguing with each other. And it's pretty common among siblings. So generally, you see your sibling as an equal, right? And very often, that argument is not out of spite of an authority figure, but just a normal uh, sibling dynamic. So... The sibling doesn't count. Okay? So what are the three categories? Angry, irritable mood, argumentative or deviant behavior or defiant behavior, and vindictiveness. And unlike conduct disorder, uh, this should be observable within a six-month period. Okay? So if you remember sa conduct disorder, it should be 12 months or one year. There is also a difference if you are talking about a child who's below five years old, the behavior should occur most days for a period of six months. So most days, meaning the person should exhibit it like four or five days in a week. Okay. Uh, if it's an individual five years or older, so you'd expect that person to really know how to handle uh, his or her deportment or his or her behavior, it should occur at least once per week for the last six months. So there's also a severity depending on how many settings the person shows his defiant behavior. So if it's only in one setting, let's say only in school or only at home, uh, then the severity is just mild. If it's in two settings, moderate. If it's in three or more, it's severe. So this, are, this is the the categorization so you have three categories and you have the specific behaviors you'd expect and you need four to be diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder so the first one would be argumentative defiant or deviant uh, defiant behavior sorry defiant behavior meaning you defy so an example of that would be you argue with authority figures or with adults so for example if a parent uh, says says something or talks to you about something, and you like to say, uh, you like to argue with that person. Uh, you like to go against what the person is saying. Uh, it can also be, and often it's an adult outside your home, so it may be a teacher. So, for example, the teacher is talking to you about a lesson in class, and then you uh, try to seek out an argument with that person or if it's a police officer let's say that uh, taps you in your car because uh, he is telling you to you know do something or asking you about certain things and then you try to escalate that into an argument okay or you often actively defy or refuse to comply with requests from authority figures or with rules so for example if your parent asks you to do some errands for her or him and then you refuse to do that or you actively ignore the person you say like why why me and then you like you storm out of the house so that's an example uh, or for example you see a sign that says bawal umihi dito or wag magtapa ng basura and then you actually choose to do that or like yeah sometimes smiling at the cctv pa so yeah um and then let's say for example in school you're told not to wear something or do something and then you actually actively choose to do it to spite 
the rule because you know you can disregard the rule and you don't care so yeah that's an example and then another one would be often deliberately annoys others so for example you say mean things to your teacher uh, and when you see that the person starts to get upset you actually prod the person more and you try to annoy the person more another would be you blame other people for your mistakes or your misbehavior so you like to place the blame on others and you don't claim responsibility for your own negative behavior next would be the angry irritable mood category so you lose your temper you get mad so for example you're just talking to uh, an officer and then you start you start to get mad and lose your temper at him or her and then you start an argument or you feel touchy so somebody jokes and then you start to feel upset about it and you are angry or resentful of other people so when you say resentful it's a combination of anger and disgust at people and then the third one would be vindictiveness so it has been spiteful or vindictive at least twice within the last six months so what that means is if you think someone has done you wrong you keep uh, an anger parang you keep tabs on what the person has done wrong to you and then you try to get back at the person so parang gaganti ka sa person okay so that's being vindictive so remember also that it's associated with distress in the individual or others, but more often in others, in his or her immediate social context. So if you can imagine, it impacts negatively on social, educational, or other important areas of functioning. So for example, if you are in school and then you're always arguing with your teacher, imagine the distress it would cause on your teacher and on your classmates because then the classroom becomes a very uncomfortable space the same is also true if you're in a workplace and you're always arguing with your boss or arguing with your colleagues they were how how imagine how difficult it must be for people to be in that situation with you so it's causing people distress and to some extent it's also causing you distress because then you'd have very unstable relationships unhealthy relationships with the people around you okay? and it would be very difficult to perform your day-to-day -day functions in those settings okay so another one would be you have to consider behaviors do not occur exclusively during the course of a psychotic substance abuse mood disorder or disruptive mood dysregulation disorder uh, so psychotic sometimes when you're when you're exhibiting when you're act in an active psychotic phase you get angry very easily you're very irritable so if the behavior occurs even when you're not expressing you have no history of psychotic symptoms so yeah you, you have to rule out psychosis first or for example if you're taking under the influence of illicit substances so if you're taking drugs um, that can cause certain symptoms like uh, you sometimes disregard other people you say things and you become very irritable so you also have to rule that out first in differential diagnosis another one would be a mood disorder do you have bipolar or are you depressed or are you exhibiting manic episodes because then that would also you'd also have to rule that out first or if you have a disruptive mood dysregulation disorder if you're a kid uh, and what that is it just in brief is that you have extreme problems regulating your emotions or your mood such that it's all you're always upset okay so you have to rule those out first before you can give a diagnosis of oppositional defiant disorder so take note that for people with this disorder they do not consider themselves as angry or defiant they're just they're just explaining that people are just very difficult around them and so they have to respond in a certain way in order to adjust when in fact they are the ones who are actually making life pretty hard for other people